Welcome back to the second part of the Timeline Marker tutorial series. In this video, I'm showing you how you can implement your own type of timeline markers. In the last video, we saw the use of the so-called timeline signals. Actually, timeline signals are only a concrete implementation of timeline markers. So during the tutorial, we're creating another type of timeline markers, dialog markers, which feed an independent text animation component with messages. For dollar free patronage, you gain access to the project files created during this tutorial. Speaking of which, I want to say thanks to our patrons who help us to make these tutorials and our game Cortex possible. A special thanks goes to Simon Zineda, David Heinzel, Erich Gangl, Melina Brunner, Robert Hartl, Reinhard Bauer, Maximilian Heinle, and Mr. Giarmati. If you like our tutorials, then please support us on Patreon as well. Now let's jump into the video. The Marker Class. In order to make your own type of markers, create a new script in Unity and call it Dialog Marker. Get rid of the mono behavior stuff and inherit from Marker. You have to include the timeline namespace to make the marker class available. This simple setup already allows you to create markers on your timeline or on tracks which accept bindings like this animation track. But yet, the marker doesn't provide any functionality. So switch back to the script and implement the iNotification interface. This tells the timeline that the marker will need to react when it's triggered. Also, it's enough to return an empty property name. Now let's add the data we want to transport with the marker. Since the marker triggers a dialog text animation, we require a message and a pause per letter property. The pause per letter basically controls the text animation speed of the message. We'll see that in a second. We also make the serialized field accessible through the code via public properties. Of course, to further customize the dialog messages, you're allowed to add more properties like a text color, text alignment, speaker portrait or whatever you can imagine. Back in Unity, you can fill your markers with data. For the sake of completeness, I want to show you how you can specify the retroactive and emit once properties on your custom markers like you can on signal markers described in the previous video. In your script, additionally realize the iNotification option provider. Expose two boolean fields so that you are able to edit the properties in the editor. Whether the properties are true or false, return the according flags or the default value. If you don't know how to work with enum flags, follow the link in the description below. The message receiver. Sadly, when you hit play, still nothing happens. This is because even though the timeline already triggers your markers, yet there is no receiver which processes the marker and its data. So create another script called dialog receiver and as always empty the class. Implement the i notification receiver interface and insert a debug message for now. You could handle the text animation directly in the script, but I decided to decouple the animation from the receiver. That's why I want to inject the animator via field in the inspector. But first, switch back to Unity, add the dialog receiver to the game object containing the playable director and add a signal marker next to the other markers. When you hit play, you can see that your dialog receiver not only processes the dialog markers, but the signal markers as well. Yet, there is no possibility to automatically filter the correct type of markers. You have to do that manually in the code. So check if the notification is of type dialog marker and also if the dialog animator is set. We are copying the marker values into a new dialog struct and add it to the animator. Assign the dialog animator to the coding field of the dialog receiver in Unity, play the cutscene and enjoy the result. Custom Marker Tracks Once you have tons of markers of different types in your timeline, you may want to organize them appropriately. Especially for our dialog markers, it would be great to have a separate dialog track. Thankfully, that's done really quickly. 
create a new script and call it dialog track. Again, get rid of the predefined code and inherit from market track instead. Define a binding type attribute passing the type of the dialog receiver. And if you like, you can give your track a unique color by using the track color attribute. That's all. In Unity, add the dialog track to your timeline and copy and paste the markers from above into the newly created track. You can delete the dialog receiver from the playable director and instead drag the dialog canvas into the binding object field of the track. Since the canvas doesn't have a dialog receiver, you are asked to attach one to it. Confirm and reassign the dialog animator. Well done! This looks great already. Marker tracks are really helpful to keep your timeline organized. I hope this video was useful to you and covers everything important about the topic. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our newsletter, support us on Patreon and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day, it's your Sensei.